kind of you, right back at you. Um, thanks a whole lot. Uh, very nice to have you here. Uh, glad you could join us. Um, and uh, and here I am. Um, I uh, I. Um, I walk out and I like to chat with you for a few minutes before I sit down and talk with the guests that come on. And, uh, and someone uh, said to me the other day, they said, Ellen, how do you come up with your monologue ideas? And um, I said, Mama, here, uh, <laughs> there's different ways. I mean, sometimes something happens to me and I come out and I want to share it and I talk about things that happen to me. Sometimes they're just things that happen to everybody and I know you can relate to it, so I bring it up and I talk about it. And sometimes your DJ runs out of gas in, in his car on the way home. And, uh, <laughs> and then you have to share that too. So um, I just, my question I guess is how? Um, how do you run out of gas? Do you not have a gas gauge? Do you not understand? I don't understand how our, our DJ Tony can run out of gas. And maybe in England the gas gauge goes backwards. Maybe he thought going down was actually filling up somehow. I, Maybe he was driving along looking for a petrol station. I don't know. I just, I, he ran out of gas on the way home the other night. I'm just picturing you on the side of the road, just, hello there, mate. I seem to have exhausted all my petrol. Can you, can you spare five quid? Um, just moving your upper arms, because there's no need. You're always, who knows? Um, I can understand in the old days how you run out of gas, but there is no excuse in the, in the 20th or 21st century, whatever we're in, that, that you can run out of gas now. I mean, there are gas stations every three blocks when you're driving, and even if it's on empty, you've still got like 30 miles until you run out of gas. That's around the time you go, you know, even if it, you shouldn't get to empty, but if it's on empty, that's the time you start. You know, I get in the car, and if I see someone's tank on empty, I always point it out and say, you know, you're, you're on empty. And everyone always says the same thing. Oh, I've got enough to make it there. Yeah. yeah. I can make it there and back. I can go to San Diego on this. This is, uh, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. And people always think of ways, like, just to conserve on gas when, they, when it's on empty or getting low. They think, you know, if I just turn off the air conditioning, you know? <laughs> And I, I just won't accelerate really fast. I'll just smoothly, I'll just turn off the radio just in case. I'll just keep that off. And I'll keep it neutral and coast and try to find hills that go down. Maybe if I try to make it more aerodynamic and wear a speed skating suit with one of those helmets, maybe if I drive like this. I don't know if that... why they do it. This is fun. <laughs> I can't stop. Oh. But that's when you think, oh, it probably would have been a lot smarter to have stopped and got, gotten gas instead of walking back on the side of the road with a gas can in your hand. Because by the way, there is nothing more dangerous than walking along the side of a freeway with a gas can in your hand. <laughs> Not only could you get hit, but if you do, you'll explode. <laughs> You look like a fool. And the only time I ever want to look like a fool is a dancing fool. Make me dance, Tony. Yeah. Dancing. Yeah. <laughs> Has that happened to you before, Tony? 
Uh, run out of gas, gas dancing. No, run out of gas. <laughs> how could you, how? I, I don't know. I thought I had enough to make it over the hill and then my, <laughs> uh, my petrol gauge was on empty, but it wasn't over the empty thing. That's the problem. You're in America. It's not petrol gauge. <laughs> <laughs> you need gas, and a gas station is right in front of you all the time. Don't look for petrol. I thought I was going to make it, and it just sort of started spluttering as I went up the hill. And Did a lorry load pull over <laughs> and help you? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you're not going to let that happen anymore. Absolutely not. not oh. That's just bad, <laughs> no, sitting on the side of the road. Don't embarrass us like that, Tony. We're doing, <laughs> we're doing too well. Don't ruin it for us. <laughs> looking like you're wandering around, looking for who knows what. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You think we're not paying you that you run out of gas or something? You got plenty of dough. Pull over and put some gas in the car. I thought I had more than I had. Well, you didn't. <laughs> All right. Oh, on the show today, Paula Abdul is here. She is so sweet. She's always nice. No matter how bad somebody's singing, she's got something nice to say. Well, those are pretty bangs or something. She has something nice. She finds the weirdest things to comment on. I, are those new buttons or anything that's... <laughs> oh, I like her a lot. She's on and we're going to talk about what happened. That's just wrong that, that LaToya got kicked off. That's wrong. Wrong. She's on... We have LaToya on Monday's show. She's going to be here Monday. Uh, she's... That's just wrong. All right, also on the show, Wilmer Valderrama is on the show from that 70s show. That's a funny show. You watch that 70s show? Very funny. He's, he's very funny. And uh, in the big finish, the today. Okay, the big finish. Here's what they say. They say from space there are only two man-made objects that are visible on Earth, the Great Wall of China and today's big finish. Perhaps they're the same thing. All right, uh, and uh, oh, it's time for the uh, rip raffle. Bring it on out, boys. <laughs> That's Nathan Houston, everybody. Nathan Houston, we're going to uh, take advantage. We're going to use this luxury box until the end of the season. And someone from the rip raffle will come in. Let's see. Carol Hirschman, come on down. Carol Hirschman. Oh. She's kissing her family goodbye. Come on down. You're like you won the Academy Award or something. You're <laughs> kissing your whole family. Let's, let's lock you in here. All right. The Royal Wave. Yeah, the Royal Wave. Look. <laughs> well, that's our show. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Just taking your sweet time. You're kissing everybody goodbye like you're never going to see them again. <laughs> Most people just take off like, who cares who it came with? <laughs> you're kissing people and hugging them like you're getting on a boat somewhere. <laughs> They're right down the stairs. All right, so uh, welcome to the Riff Raff, and uh, can we get you something to drink? Would you like some water, milk? Oh, I have some. Would you like one? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> oh, <okay. Yes. laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks. <laughs> You have some? Yeah. All thanks. right, good. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks. Do you have any chips or anything? I'm kind of hungry. I have nuts. Would you like some nuts? Some nuts? nuts? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, and they're in the commercial. Thanks. Mm. <laughs> thanks a lot. Welcome to the luxury box.
Thanks. Enjoy. <laughs> All right, uh, just a quick update for everybody uh, that's interested in bidding on this watch that I have. Uh, it's a Jacob watch. It's got tons of diamonds. It's a $16,000 watch that is uh, it's, it's jam-packed with all kinds of gorgeous diamonds. Mary J. Blige gave it to me as a gift from Jacob the jeweler, and I thought, I can't wear something like that. That's too fancy. So donating the money that it sells for, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's up to $12,600. It's going to go to the Susan G. Coleman Breast Cancer Foundation. And, uh, so go on to our website. And uh, the bidding ends Monday at noon Eastern time. So go ahead and bid on the watch if you're interested. It's a beautiful watch. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's good for any occasion, really. Um, <laughs> and uh, OK, hey, while, while you're on the uh, website also, uh, make sure that you, you put in your, your request for our new little segment called Oh Yes, You Can. People always have these dreams. They want to do things. And they think, oh, that'll never happen. Mandy Moore was on the show, and she had this dream of riding on a John Deere uh, tractor lawnmower. <laughs> Uh, some people have smaller dreams, and uh, <laughs> we put her on a lawnmower, and Lauren Graham wanted to ride a horse, so we put her on a horse, and a lot of people have, they're sending in, we've gotten 30,000, a lot of thousands and thousands of uh, dreams. Some people want to kiss a walrus, some people want to have uh, lunch with Cher, some people want Cher to kiss a walrus, a lot of people, <laughs> that's my fantasy, but it's, uh, <laughs> Anyway, so, so uh, tell us what you want to do. We're going to make something happen for somebody. So uh, hey, and uh, this is our final finalist for uh, How Come You're Not on TV. So our final contestant uh, for How Come You're Not on TV uh, is, is right here. Let's, let's see her. And uh, so let's let's show you. Number one was a little eight-year-old drummer uh, who is adorable, very talented. Uh, number two is the guy that balances on the gym balls. And uh, uh, number three is the Rock and Runway Revival. And uh, then we just saw the Salsa Lip Sync. And you can go on our website and you can vote right now. And you only have a few days. And when we pick the winner, whoever it is, is going to be on TV uh, here next week. And uh, one, one, can, you, can you believe one of these people? <laughs> You'll get to see live. <laughs> you, yeah. You, you won't see him on any other show. <laughs> we have the exclusive. All right, so don't go away. When we come back, we're going to find out what's on your mind. Well, it's Friday, and that means it's time for a segment we like to call What's on Your Mind. All right, so our first letter comes from Elizabeth Landry from Corinth, Texas. She says, first, let me say how much I love you and your show. You make me laugh and entertain me now. The clapping at the beginning. Not so fun for your TV audience. Maybe you could go out there prior to us joining you and let them get it out of the way. Liz Landry. All right, well, Liz, I do come out before the show starts. I say hi to the nice people, and we talk for a few minutes. And, uh, and then I come out, and, and sometimes they clap longer, and I don't want to stop them. They want to do what they want to do. I don't like to stop them. But I agree, sometimes it's, it gets out of hand, and I do try to stop them. I remember this one day, it went on. It seemed like, uh, I think we have the tape, because uh, we couldn't even believe this. Take a look.
that, you remember that day, Mary? It was uh, that we actually had to send the guests home that day. Uh, we couldn't even do a show. Renee Zellweger is still furious with me. And, uh, oh, man, driving home, I passed a few of the audience members still clapping in the car. Uh, number two comes from Ann Pena from Tucson, Arizona. Uh, Ellen, you are so creative with your humor. I'm asking if it's possible for you to make one-line blurb or phrase unique to you when you feel surprised. In the past, I've heard you use, oh my God, several times, and I noticed that that particular phrase is so common. Why stick with one that's so common when you're so unique? Thanks for the possibility of taking this into consideration. Sincerely, Ann Pena. Oh my God, you're so right. I, uh, <laughs> you don't realize things like that. You know, to me, it's just, uh, I'm just talking and I don't pay attention, but I look back at the tape and I thought, oh my God, she's so right. Um, oh my God, I'm doing it again. Okay, so. There are other phrases, and I started last night when I was laying awake thinking, oh my God, I don't want to keep doing that. So I, I thought of like, what about aces and beer? I don't believe it, you know? Uh, or like, well, wrap up grandpa and sell my dishes on the internet. I don't believe it. Or what in Popeye's name is going around here? Huh? You know, or well, tickle my earlobe with a Tonka toy. Or, oh my God, there's so many other options, but I am gonna, I'm gonna pay attention to that. So thanks so much for, for pointing that, that out to me. Uh, this is from Amy, uh, I think Murchie, Murchie from Kingston, Ontario, Canada. Uh, Ellen, I missed, I believe that's how she says it. Ellen, I missed Friday's big finish even after you said specifically not to, but truly it wasn't my fault. I taped your show and the network must have had some scheduling issues because I saw you sit down to tea with David Bowie and Tina Fey and Tony and then it cut away to news. Perhaps you could replay it again so I could see how great it was. Big time fan, Amy. Um, oh, I do remember that with David Bowie and Tina Fey. That was a huge big finish. I remember that day so well because I read in the New York Times it said uh, the review of the show was if you must see one big finish this year, let it be this one. Um, so I, I gladly bring it to you because it really was the biggest we've ever done. Take a look. That's our show, and now for our big finish, let's hear it one more time for David Bowie and Tina Fey. Oh, man. Oh, aces and beer, I don't believe it. Oh, let me see when my, I'll look at my calendar because we'll have to fit this in another show because uh, that's too important to, we can't, we're busy. Oh, all right, we'll try to show it to you again Friday the 13th. All right. <laughs> You'll see it, don't you worry. All right, this is from, uh, yeah, this is from uh, Richard Janes from Buena Park, California. Uh, greetings, Mr. Generous. This is the first in quite a while that I've written to a TV celebrity. The last person I wrote to was Mr. John Larroquette, and that was several years back. <laughs> I watch your show daily, enjoy your dancing, and the music that your keyboard player plays. Would you please give him my regards? I thought I'd do something different, which I feel pretty sure you get lots of requests for an autograph picture. Well, I thought I'd send one myself of myself to you. Quite a switch, huh? I do have quite a collection of said pictures, but won't impose on you to send me one. I always figure it's better to give than to receive. receive. Besides, you're the very first celebrity that I've sent my picture to, and it's an honor for me to do so. I'm not sure what will happen to it, but at least it's yours. <laughs> Respectfully, Richard Jane's retired police officer. Um, so uh, he sent it to me, and uh, this uh, is the picture right here that he sent. Uh, let's looky loo it right here. Uh, I'd like you to notice he wrote to Ellen D. Helen. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I just want to point out also that Larroquette was spelled correctly in the letter, but <laughs> this is to Helen. Um, you're very observant, though, I'll tell you that, uh, RJ. That's what he says from RJ. Um, very, very observant, because not too many people notice our keyboard player. Uh, he goes unnoticed around here often. Uh, I'm really surprised. The people just see Tony, and they don't really notice that uh, there he is right there. <laughs> Say hi to Derek, everybody, our keyboard player. Thanks a lot. Thanks. All right. 
and you said you don't know what's going to happen to this picture. I know exactly what's going to I've already had it framed, and what I'm going to do, I have my picture of, of little Jonathan here. It's going to, Jonathan Polanco, I'm going to put it in the luxury box, and it'll be always right here for me to see and for whoever's in the luxury box. Look at that. You have that, both little Jonathan and then RJ. Say Helen. Isn't that nice? All right. Right there. All right. Tonka Toy, Paula Abdul will be here right after this. We'll be right back. Our first guest is a Grammy Award winning singer and an Emmy Award winning choreographer. We have also come to love her as the compassionate judge on American Idol. Please welcome Paula Abdul. Hi, Paula. I'm so excited to be here. So let's, let's talk about what happened the other night. I'm, I'm, uh, the, the LaToya situation is outrageous to me. Devastating. What, what, what happened in your opinion? Uh, you know, I just think that people at times forget how the show works. Mm -hmm. I, do, I do, I think that America forgets that when someone does a great job, that they think that they're safe and that they have to, you know, vote for the people who aren't safe and forget about the ones who do a great job. And I think that Latoya's been so consistent with really great performances that a lot, you know, a lot of people felt really bad for, for Jasmine's mm -hmm. performance and that she's such a sweetheart and she started shedding some tears and wanted to, you know, give her some love. And they felt like, well, you know, maybe Latoya's safe. She gave a great performance and forgot, you know? Yeah. That's I hard. I don't know. You know, you never know. And there's so many different theories that whatever. I just, I, and it's really weird. I, I, I woke up in the middle of the night, like out of a dead sleep, and I, I panicked. I, I, I felt something weird like that was going to happen. Oh, really? But the night before? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I did. I, and, Rand, and I told Randy, I said, I couldn't sleep. I thought, you know, I said something weird's going to happen. You were right. I mean, I've been surprised that Fantasia's been in the, the bottom three, you know, before. I, I think Fantasia, I thought it was going to be down to Fantasia and LaToya. In my opinion, I it should have been too. them. And I think, Di I nothing too. to take away from them. I think Diana's yeah. amazing for 16 years old. But... And not to take away from any of them, they're, yeah. you know, at this stage of the game, they're all pretty brilliant. I just, I thought it was going to be, the showdown was going to be Latoya and Fantasia. For sure. And now I don't understand why, you know, why Fantasia has been, I now, now who do you think is going to win? <laughs> I, you know what, logic is thrown out the window. I don't know. It, it, yeah. I walked out of the room, I went, I, I don't know, you know, it, it, Diana could win. Yeah. This, you know what? But all of Hawaii voting, Jasmine could win. Right. And then people will be, what in Popeye's name is going on around here? <laughs> America, you have, to get, you have to stay on that phone. You got to keep dialing yeah. and dialing for your favorite, which means, well, Jennifer, you know, the same thing happened with Jennifer. Yeah, Jennifer. I was shocked that Jennifer got kicked off. I know. That's I know. just crazy. Well, Latoya's going to be here on, on Monday's show. She's, and she's just one, she's one classy lady. She, Give her a lot of love. Yeah, she should, she should, we were talking about this today, that she's someone who could literally step over into Aida or a play or, or, or she could anything. just. Anything. She's just anything. already she's polished. She's a chameleon, and, too. She can, she, she would, she took every genre each week and made it her own. Mm -hmm. Just like effortlessly. Yeah. Don't Rain on My Parade was great. She sang the heck out of it yeah. last night, too. Yeah, that was great. I was bawling my eyes out, and she's going, stop crying, Paula. Yeah. <laughs> but I just think you needed to be there. She yeah. Goes, it's okay. I go, I know, but I just thought you needed to be there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, oh, she did. Paula. But you are, so, you know, now, because everybody comments on how you find something positive to say about everybody. Nice things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Well, no, you know, Alan, I am a performer. I, it's very difficult. Randy and Simon don't know what it's like being vulnerable, at your most vulnerable, mm -hmm. being on stage and giving your, all, giving your all week after week, rising above adversity if you, you know, don't have the greatest performance. And uh, it's tough. I, I tell people that they have to have realistic goals. I mean, if you, if you give, set a time, you know, time limit you know give yourself a few years to to pursue it hard heavy mm -hmm. and hard but then you know don't give up on other you know things that you're talented at you know you could be the greatest doctor or lawyer or Indian chief yeah. <laughs> yeah. give yourself 12 years to be a good doctor and uh, if you don't make it 
then go to Indian Chief. Um, <laughs> now, now, what is it? What's the really the the series? W w the the what's going on with you and Simon? Is that a serious <laughs> feud? Do y'all like each other? Do you not like each other? Tell us because I we won't tell anyone. I don't know. <laughs> we won't tell anyone. I don't know. From week to week, it's a different. From day to day, it's different. And and honestly, that's the best. That's all I can give you. I don't know because there's. It depends on how he walks in the door. Yeah, clearly. I don't know. Look at this. He does. Look. Just millions of albums. You've choreographed, uh, like everyone from Janet Jackson to who else? Who have, have you choreographed? Um, gosh, George Michael and and what video? With Prince, uh, his tour. Really? I did the Jacksons their reunion tour. Uh, when they when, gosh, that was my first job out of being a Laker girl. I was a, a Laker girl, I guess, from '83. <laughs> To 84. No. Right, so we just missed. You. Yeah, Everyone we just talked about you were the hottest, hottest Thank dancer. Thank you. Well, and a yeah, I a lot wanted of the, to fill your, you know, it really distracted a lot of the players, and I think that they, I bet. they didn't play as well. They look over, and there I was, That's what I and heard. so um, the wives were jealous of you yeah, too. I, I know. still put the outfit on sometimes. I do. Um, all right, so. You, since you, you're a choreographer, I figure, why shouldn't I take advantage of this? I'm dancing every day, and maybe you could teach me a couple of new dances. Ooh. Yeah? I was saying... Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, you're going to dance in these shoes? You're crazy. I'm, I was born with these shoes. Oh, all okay. right. All right. Are we going to... Um, you well, wanna, see, I what's don't... better, on carpet or floor? I think carpet. Carpet. Right? You think carpet. Okay. No? <laughs> yeah, carpet. You laughed at it. <laughs> well, I was thinking we'd do something funny as opposed to something serious and technical. Sure, let's do something funny. Because, you know, you do technical stuff. Yeah, I know. Let's, let's do something funny for a change. <laughs> well, remember, you remember the show The Jeffersons? Sure. And, you know, George and Weezy. Weezy. And he'd, he'd be dancing uh -huh. and all that stuff. But let's do the George Jefferson. Okay? How's that go? Okay, can we hear some music? Okay, so we, we stick out the butt, you know, like, and we're doing the wheezing. Come on, come on, wheezing, come on. So we're gonna start over here. That that's good, except that kind of makes your back hurt when you do that. <laughs> yeah. Stay there. Oh, that's good. Now stay there. Oh sure. Now what you're gonna do? Keep your knees bent. But every time you step forward, every time you step forward, you're gonna throw your hips. You're gonna throw your hips forward. So you're gonna take a step forward. You're gonna throw the hips forward. Uh huh. So it's throw the hips forward when you walk. <laughs> now you're gonna step forward. And you're gonna throw the hips forward again. Forward. And. Four. Are we doing that keep on trucking guy? What are we doing? Four. Yeah? And four. What are we doing? Four. And four. Where are you going? Are you leaving? No. Where are you going? Watch what, what happens. happens. Watch what happens. Watch my butt. Uh, all right. All right. continues on Tuesday at 8 o'clock, Wednesday at 8.30 on Fox. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Now it's time to play a little game we like to call, pardon me, are these your sunglasses? At work and in my spare time, I've studied the human face and I've learned two things, but those aren't important right now. I've also learned <laughs> what sunglasses would look best on what person. And so uh, what we've done here, I've never met these four people before and I've never met these sunglasses before. I will now use my powers to try to match the sunglasses to the owners. To add to the challenge, there are a couple of sunglasses here that do not belong to them at all. So I have three rounds to figure it out. With each round, I'll have less time to make a match. It sounds easy? 
What is it? Okay. Uh, what is your name? Jen. Jen, and uh, where do you live? Glendora. Glendora. Oh. And you know not to stare directly into the sun. Yes, I do. Fantastic. <laughs> but why sunglasses? Why not just squint? I What's your name? Cindy. Cindy, and where do you live? Um, Oregon. Oregon? But and originally from New Orleans. Oh, uh, my hometown. <laughs> right on. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> And what is your name? Melissa. Melissa, and where do you live? Palmer, Massachusetts. And originally from? Palmer, Massachusetts. Right on! <laughs> right. And your name? Karen. Karen, all right, and you live? Hesperia. <laughs> Gesundheit. Um, <laughs> Hesperia, all right, fantastic. So you all have had these sunglasses for a long years time? And years and years? All of you? Relatively new? Relatively new? I think I've got it. All right, let me have, uh, what do we have? 30 seconds on the clock, please. And uh, whoo, let's go. Thank you. Can I have 20 seconds on the clock, please? say that um, if I switched it, would I be right? Which ones? Both of you. Yeah. Are those yours? Yeah, those are mine. Oh, darn, those I was so close. All right, well, you will win <laughs> uh, a JVC digital video camera, and uh, that's how you play Pardon Me. Are these Wilbur Valderrama will join you right after this. We'll be right back. We know our next guest is Fez, the funny foreign exchange student on Fox's That 70s Show. Have a look. Please welcome Rumor Valderrama. You look great. Thank you. You look great. That's a beautiful suit. It's for you. You got. Thank you very much. I will wear it after. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. All right. Well, you look great, and uh, you're. I was just watching that, thinking you speak very, very good English. Com com well, if I would move someplace <laughs> else compared to me right now. I mean, how do you? You're from Venezuela. That too. Jeez, what's wrong with me right now? I um. I was, uh, I was born in Miami. When oh. I was three years old, my parents moved back to Venezuela, and that's where I was raised. And uh, when I turned 14, we came back to the States and didn't know how to speak English or anything. I had to learn, and that explains my little light accent. I would think that English it would be very hard to learn because we have so many words that mean the same thing. Yeah, you know, and also you guys have so many shortcuts, you know. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, uh, I think one of them, you know, I remember when I learned how to say uh, cannot, I was very, very happy. I started saying, hey, I cannot go there, you know. Um, and then someone came and said, hey, you can't. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> so you were here four years, and then you got that 70s show four years later? That's, yeah. That's very fast. Yeah, yeah, actually, I, I, uh, I took classes right off the bat, you know, and I, you know, I, was in, I did a lot of theater, you mm -hmm. know, and, uh, and, I, and I just, you know, I committed to what I wanted to do. You yeah. Know, and, uh, and it just, uh, one thing led to another. And this character could not, could not be more perfect for me, you know? Yeah, it, it's great. <laughs> and now you're getting to meet a lot of, uh, a lot of people. The show's popular. And mm -hmm. uh, you're hanging out with, I have to bring it up. I'm usually not, but you, because we had Lindsay Lohan the other day on the <laughs> show. And there's all the gossip about that yeah. she's, she was seen making out with you 
Okay, uh, first of all, hold on. She was second. making out with you in a club. Yeah, this is that's that's the funny thing about all these magazines, you know. For for me, as in for most actors, the number one rule: there's no making out of the club. Okay, <laughs> you don't, you just don't do that. Why is know? that? For that reason, uh -huh. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I, I tell you, you know, I, it's really funny, you know. I think that every week and a half, every two weeks, you know, I'm dating someone new. It's really, really. So funny. you didn't make out with Lindsay no, in didn't. the club? No, I didn't. She's All actually right. a really, really close friend of mine. She's a sweetie and. Uh, I you know, hate to do this to you. I hate to do this to you. No, no, she was I, on last week. Uh, I, That's not what she said. I adore her. I love her. I, I just want to show you, and I don't want to get you All in right. trouble, but you've, you've just clearly. Bring it. Bring All right. It. Here, she was on last week. <laughs> it's in the Us Weekly that right there called you the kissing bandit. Who are you, yeah. who are you supposedly kissing? Wilmer Valderrama. Oh my God, we were totally making out like crazy. And I was like, not here, Wilmer. And he's like, Lindsay, come on, we're in a club. No one is watching. <laughs> wow, Lindsay, you surprised me so much. Yeah. I, thought, I thought we were going to talk about this before I came yeah. on the show. <laughs> Whoa, I look yeah. down now. All right. <laughs> I look down now. You're busted. I'm busted. All right. um, well, anyway, well, congratulations. And, and the 150th episode yeah. of uh, Foxes at 70 show airs this Sunday at 8.30. On, and the season finale airs next Wednesday uh, at 8 o'clock on Fox. Uh, the big finish is next. It involves him. Don't go away. That's our show. Thanks to Paula Abdul, Monday, David Spade, Vanessa Marcel, and Latoya London will be here. Now, one more time for Wilmer Valderrama. <laughs>